Okay, TMPers, I sure appreciate your enthusiasm for the project, for watching all the videos. So humbled you find interest after all these years in the TMP video product. As you know, I work very hard for you. We have a great time here on tabletop, in the field, in the bunker, on the motos, in the boat. This is a gear adventure channel. Can't and won't happen without you though. Thank you so much. Now, sometimes in the Patreon donation environment, a dude will contact me and he says, hey, I got such and such. I really want you to review it, will you? Uh, I have to be honest and most of the time the answer is thank you, but no thank you because I am buried deeply in gear awaiting for my reviewing time waiting for my testing time and so I really don't like to add to that stack okay so that's that now Nathan H an elite TMP donor what's up Nathan did contact me and he gave me a list of items he's like hey man uh, I'm gonna send you some knives to review I, I'm sorry to sign like he bought several of the TMP Spyderco blades like Dragonfly this one, the Delica and the Endura. He had at least a trifecta and I think another one. So he had two Enduras or something like that. And that is a service I do provide for my donors only that if you buy some of my special edition blades that you can send them to me and then you have to pay for a label to ship them back to you. I'll send you instructions on how to do this process and you get them signed something like this, which will add to the value, I think. These have gone up in value, as I've said, way up in value. All the collectible knives in TMP have. Okay, so he said, I'm gonna send you some knives to sign them. So I said, absolutely, send them on, I'm happy to sign them. And then he goes, and I have some other stuff I really want you to review. I'll put this in and that in, and I'm like, oh my gosh. He was like doing a laundry list, and as a reminder, a <laughs> public service announcement for the project, please don't send me anything ever to review. Well, well not ever. But I, I'm just, again, buried so deep in the gear, waiting for testing and review. Yeah, no, no, no thanks. Dude sent me a whole box, a big box, all those knives. I signed a lot for him. And then in the, the batch of stuff he sent me, I did find a gem or two and something I did not know about. And here is one of them. Have you ever heard of this knife from the Russian manufacturer Dagger Knives? The Parrot. Oh my gosh, I didn't even know about this knife. And Nathan H has it. And I am in love. I'm in love with this knife, dude. Love with it. This is a big fight knife. It, Dagger is kind of an in-your-face company. They just put out these amazing knives. And of course, I've done a special edition with them. The Dagger Knives Sting issued in 2021. Congratulations to Tim Pierce who scored that. Came out in lime and also this very cool lemon yellow. Speaking of TMP collectible blades, this one's dirty because I do use it. 204 of 500. I haven't even signed this one yet. What's up with that? I need to sign my own knife. So I love Dagger Knives. I like their theme, even though I'm not a big skull guy, but. Their screaming skull on the pocket clip is just hilarious. It's got freaking eyeballs there. Yeah, the screws are eyeballs. I just raved about the sting. And anyways, we did a special edition. This is really my first association with the company. Now, I'm gonna get into the details of this knife, but I, I wanna tell you this, and this is kind of part of this review. It, it comes from Russia, it hails from Russia, and I think these knives are no more I think your sting has gone up 50% in value because they will be no more because the Biden administration is embargoing all things Russian, boycotting all things Russian. Uh, ammunition, the steel case ammunition is done from Russia. I think the knives from Russia are done for now. I could be wrong on that. Maybe they are squeaking in somehow, but I know for a fact that this knife is sold out on Pro 2A friendly Blade HQ. It's gone. So I, I don't think you can buy this knife. You might find it in some other websites, but I, I like doing my affiliate links for you guys whenever I can. Yeah, that's, that's how I run the show. I have to be profitable. Sting knife, awesome. Buy dagger. 
I'm very, very sad that it's not readily, readily available to you due to uh, erroneous politics. I'm just gonna leave it at that. I'll save you a rant. That's for another video. This knife is fantastic though. The blade length is, get this, 4.75 inches? What? And the sting is no slouch, but look at this, dude. This is one of those rare manufacturers that is meeting and greeting the cold steel Marshall knife thing. In other words, cold steel is one of those few manufacturers that have come out with these large folding knives the Espada, the Voyager, the others I've reviewed, and they're just like no holds barred. This is a fight knife. Very few manufacturers are willing to do that. Apparently, should I use past tense? I don't know. Uh, Dagger Knives was willing to do that. Blade thickness is 0.16 inches. It, it is D2 steel. D2 steel. Black washed in this variation. Awesome knife, man. So this isn't titanium. This is a stainless steel knife, and it's going to weigh something. I mean, we're talking like 6.7 ounces for this dude. Yeah, but I mean, for what it is, it's just such a cool knife. We'll start with the blade, I guess. Look at this large run of perfect jimping. Nice thumb ramp. I will say right away that this is a tactical knife. This is an, an emergency defensive tool, the Dagger Knives Parrot. The one thing I would say is this forward choil right here is very small. It does not fit my finger. I don't know if I'd ever come forward here anyhow because I'd be afraid in a thrusting movement that I would slip forward and really do a number on my finger. Back here, it's fine. I would have liked it had they made this a little bit bigger though. I mean, just really dish it out. Uh, you don't have to make it any deeper, just make it wider here. Then dude, for detail work for EDC tasks, I guess if you use this for EDC tasks, it would work. I love the blade shape too, it's just sick. It's got a flat portion here for Edge Pro Apex. Really sharp point, just like the Sting does. So like I said, don't drop this on the concrete, you'll be very, very sad. D2 steel. And their formulation of D2, having used the dagger, sting, fantastic. A Little bit harder to sharpen, but it runs an edge very nicely. Speaking of which, the edge out of box for this parrot is fantastic. Let's check the deployment and lockup on this flipper design, big flipper design. Oh my goodness, that's a good deployment. For almost a five inch blade, dude, Yeah, that, that's awesome. Lockup, perfect. Timing on the Admiral lock bar. Sorry, I'm not filming that too good. I'm looking like out of screen, really good. Hyper extension protection right there on the interior of the lock bar. You can lock it so it doesn't like close. That's a unique feature by the way, kind of nice. I have thumped on, not this knife and not on the sting, but some frame locks before. I'll tell you this guys, they do not like hard use. Like if you're like batoning with it and I've done it on multiple knives, it's a guaranteed way to ruin your lockup. I don't care if it has a steel insert like this one does, you're just gonna ruin it. Don't, don't do it. I, and I know you won't. Why, why was I doing it? I'll tell you why. Because I'm a knife reviewer of sorts and I like testing shit. That's why. And I learned that, yeah, these, they're not really hard use knives. I'd rather use a triad lock, speaking of cold steel. Really cool looking. Does this look sci-fi-ish? Yeah. Like the Chronicles of Riddick type knife. This is what it reminds me of. There's our screaming skull with subdued screws here. Big old lanyard hole back here on the stainless steel frame lock. Stainless steel backspacer. Again, this is a more of a heavier knife. There's no like milling of the liners whatsoever. So they didn't even make an attempt. They're like, ah, it's a big knife. It's gonna be heavy. I guess there's two tiny cutouts right here. <laughs> it's still heavy. We have olive drab, medium traction. Ah, it's actually probably low traction G10 on the Parrot on this side. Really nice beveling going on here. Swappable clip, so you can swap it to this side. Great ambidextrous knife. Jardine, are you listening? 
he's a lefty. Not in terms of politics, in terms of, uh, you know, hand orientation. <laughs> so look at the blade to handle ratio on the Parrot 2. Very nice. Let's check the retention. Pretty good. I can not shake it out if I flip it, uh, you know, give a good wrist action there, I can do it. Uh, one thing you'll watch out for is that lock button might self deploy when you do that because if you flip it out really hard, it may lock on you. Here's your centering of the dagger knives made in Russia. Sting, not Sting, sorry, Parrot. Perfect, really cool knife. Now this was available at Blade HQ for $99. What a deal. I am so sad I didn't get one. So sad. I would just like it as a cast member. Holy cow. Um, hey, Nathan, let me know if you want you want to get rid of this knife. I'll just, I'll just keep it. Keep it forever. I'm kidding. I'll send it back to you eventually. I'll probably put some wear and tear on it. I should have done some cutting tests with it. I don't know. I've been a little bit busy with Red Skies and stuff. So I couldn't do it. Uh, highly recommended the Dagger Knives Parrot if you can find it. Uh, different knives that would be kind of like it. Uh, I don't have the large version, but I would say it's not kind of like it, but uh, the large one is fantastic. And that's a CRKT, what is this, a Crossbones? This is a medium sized version, but the big one is massive. I wonder if I've posted my review on that. I thought I did. IKBS, super fast, also a flipper design, unique captured liner lock and an aluminum handle set. It's really cool, actually. The Crossbones is highly, highly recommended. Great knife by CRKT. And knowing CRKT is probably discontinued already. Holy crap. What's this? Speaking of cool stuff, this is a 1 to 64 scale. You can read it right there. Dodge Custom. 1957 Dodge Custom Royal Lancer Super D500. A whopping 310 horsepower? Dude, back in 57, that was a lot. That was a lot, dude. Yeah, vet's pushing almost 500. My vet is, and that's stock. I haven't even done anything to it. My watch for the day is still that Invicta Sub Aqua Zager exclusive, and man, does it make me happy. I just love it, love it, love it. Great watch, heavy, big watch. Unless you are filled with testosterone like I am, don't even try it. It won't work for you. I'll put a link to this below, taking you to Joma Shop if it's still there. If you don't see a link, that means it's sold out. This is a glycine dive watch. Combat something something, combat sub or whatever the heck they call it. This is a 42 millimeter and I did hands mod this one. Look at that to get rid of the shiny metal. Yeah, the shiny metal, and now it's tangerine orange, very cool. Automatic, Swiss automatic actually, value Swiss watch, and we are done. Yeah, I have a lot of ways to spend your money. I am good at it, uh, but again, I think it makes you happy. That's right, and you come to TMP to be happy. And I do keep that tradition well in play. Thanks again to the donors keeping the show going. They're the reason I work so very hard for you. At least subscribe, at least hit the notification bell wherever this video posts. I'm done.